Let's go into the report now. Auditor General, can you share the scope and timing of your 2021 audit report using this tool? Uh, yes, yes, I can share that. Uh, we, we carried out an assessment mm -hmm. uh, concurrently with the audit of the financial year 2019-2020. And uh, what we did is we applied the assessment on core PFM institutions, mm -hmm. uh, that is the National Treasury, uh, Parliament, and uh, of course the Revenue uh, Authority. Uh, our Revenue Authority is the Kenya Revenue Authority. Yes. But at the same time, we had to do some uh, corroboration of information uh, because our structure is slightly different. We have a controller of budget who is actually the one who authorizes the release, the exchequer releases. Okay. Uh, okay. We had to get information uh, from the controller of budget. Mm -hmm. And we also have a commission for revenue allocation that we had to bring on board mm -hmm. to look at what decisions were they making with regard to the budgets, uh -huh. especially between the national and the sub-national level where the revenue uh, sharing uh, of revenue takes place. And uh, that widened the scope a little bit in terms of the core PFM entities. Wow. Wow. Uh, we assessed seven ministries uh, because of the, the, the structure of, of government. Mm -hmm. And these ministries are those that respond to what we call the prioritized areas in our national development plan right. uh, wow. and also the SDGs. And this has to do with health mm -hmm. ministry uh, water, sanitation, and irrigation, because they go hand in hand. Uh, we had to look at infrastructure, and especially now because of the pandemic that we're facing, we are facing COVID-19. Mm -hmm. So we had to look at all the, the, the entities that are responding mm -hmm. to those prioritized areas, mm -hmm. uh, the SDGs and the, and the pandemic. Uh, State Department for Housing, because we have a prioritized area of affordable housing in, 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 in Kenya. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, the uh, Ministry of Education and, and Energy. And we assessed the entities comprehensively using the PFM tool and consolidated uh, the final report. Uh, the interpretation, of course, of, mm -hmm. the, of the results uh, required that we sit and we engage back and forth and have a lot of team discussions. The, there was a challenge that we had to do this online, but mm -hmm. still we, oh, we wow. soldiered on. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, there was also back and forth communication with the entities where some results, we, we were a little bit doubtful and would want okay. to get more or additional information. All right, all right. What, what now, brought about the doubts, really? Was uh, it the quality of the information? or Not really the quality of information, but the completeness of completeness. the information. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't have complete information, uh, you may arrive at the wrong conclusion. Mm -hmm. So where, and especially based on the experiences of the auditors, because I was using very experienced auditors, yes. where they felt that the information was not complete, all that it would be augmented by information from another entity. Mm -hmm. Then we would pause and ask uh, uh, further questions, especially on root cause analysis. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Um, well, look, yeah. I'm listening to your, to your scope here, Auditor General. It's quite a wide scope. Um, it gives me the feeling that clearly there was a lot of work that was done. And how did you manage the efficiency? <laughs> I mean, this sounds like an audit that should take yeah quite a long time to finish but yes. you finished it but how did you manage those efficiencies no uh ed i have to thank afro Zai for that because wow. um, <laughs> before we started we had to do a sort of a refresher course training mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, to get the teams comfortable uh -huh. uh, again we had to go through the results that we had uh, we had uh, achieved uh, when we were doing the pilot study yes uh, now, when you do it concurrently, it means that when the team or when the auditors are auditing the normal financial audits or compliance audits, they are also asking questions relating yes. to PFM RF. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So you're not doing two audits. You're doing one audit, wow. but getting more information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, the only thing is that uh, you have to, to ensure that you keep sight uh, of, of what the end, uh, the objectives are for the two, for the two different audits. But Ed, what we have discovered and what I've discovered is that at the end of the day, the Ed results is the same. Uh -huh. That you want a PFM system that responds to the needs of the people, that responds to service delivery, and that responds to the circumstances that each, each country is, uh, is facing. Wow. So, Beautiful. Uh, supervision, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of 
communication, mm -hmm. uh, the teams regrouping mm -hmm. every, every, every two or three weeks wow. just to share experiences. And then one thing that uh, I incorporated was peer review. Uh -huh. That uh, I would ask the teams, uh, share your findings, share your results mm -hmm. with the other teams. If, for example, the team that is assessing the Ministry of, uh, of uh, Health mm -hmm. uh, would share their results with the, the team that was assessing, for example, the Ministry of Agriculture. Mm -hmm. And they do a peer review, especially on root cause analysis. And that enriched the, the, the results because they would share uh, they would share their experiences and they would share the best practices uh, based on what they had gone through. Excellent. Yeah. Well, look, the scope is sufficient enough, sufficient enough to allow me to ask the next question, which I think, Auditor General, you should answer point blank. And that question is based on your report. May we have, just from a summary, summative uh, perspective, how efficient and effective are the PFM systems in Kenya? Mm. The people need to know. Yeah. You have the answers now, I suppose. Mm. Mm. Yes, ba based on the results, uh, this being the first uh, report, which I'm calling um, a baseline, mm -hmm. sort of mm -hmm. uh, an assessment. Mm -hmm. Again, uh, keeping in mind that we are going through a pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some of our findings, uh, where we were finding areas of weaknesses uh, with the system, mm -hmm. Uh, were being attributed to what the entities were going through with regard to, to, to COVID. But based on the assessment, mm -hmm. uh, Kenya has a very robust PFM system that is yes. anchored in the Constitution. Mm -hmm. uh, indeed, the Constitution also identifies the key players or actors and institutions when it comes to uh, public finance management. And based on our findings is that this is being implemented. Mm -hmm. but with differing results from entity to entity. All right. You have entities that are achieving very high results wow. uh, and very st which, which are very strong uh, in terms of uh, governance, in terms of policy, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, in terms of HR, and things are working. Uh, and the same entities are also getting the, requ the requisite funding to, to, to perform uh, the activities that they need to perform uh, to, to, to respond to their mandates. Mm -hmm. But again, uh, the same results show us some entities that were quite weak. All right. And uh, you know, we say a PFM system is as strong as the weakest of course. Uh, entity. Yes. So that brought down some of the results mm -hmm. and that indicated areas of risks and areas of weaknesses that need to be addressed. But overall, we have a very robust PFM system uh, the implementation is what is bringing the differing results uh, from entity to entity, and that needs to be addressed. We find out why is it that one entity is doing mm -hmm. very well, is getting high scores, uh -huh, uh -huh. Uh, is achieving its mandate, it's responding to SDGs, it's mm -hmm. addressing the SDGs, it's addressing the National Development Plan. Mm -hmm. And one entity is basically uh, just funding its uh, normal activities mm -hmm. uh, without regard to the alignment with uh, what is uh, the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So that is uh, a, a, a cause of, I mean, as a result of uh, the assessment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, without, of course, going to the explicit ministries, uh, they each of them have received a report. Uh -huh. That's good. Uh, every uh, permanent secretary or accounting officer has received the report and uh, with the highlights on their areas mm -hmm. and we'll follow up now at entity level on implementation ag i mean i, I, I want to hold you back there yes we don't want to go to specific ministries i agree mm -hmm. uh, I, I think that's one of the deals that we had before we we had this yeah. interview mm -hmm. but um we don't have a deal on you telling us what percentage are doing well and what percentage are not doing so well mm -hmm. i mean you're a strategist yourself. Yeah. We talk about the cow, the dog, the mm -hmm. star. Mm -hmm. Where are they falling off on percentages now? Um, Ed, I have to say that 75% uh, mm -hmm. were doing well. Wow. Uh, with regard to implementation, mm -hmm. uh, but with regard to uh, ensuring that documentation is oh. there to support uh, the results, uh, we had a bit of a problem. Uh, the, the, I, I attribute that success to the National Treasury because okay. every year the National Treasury reissues 
uh, directives yes. on what should be done with regard to budget making mm -hmm. and with regard to feedback uh, or reports that should be sent back uh, for consolidation. And we also have the controller of budget who must get uh, res reports on how budgets are being implemented. Mm -hmm. So that has helped to a very big extent on monitoring mm -hmm. the implementation. Uh, but we still have some way to go because mm -hmm. uh, if you find that the ministry that might be weak is mm -hmm. a critical ministry, wow. then, then, yeah, then you, you have a problem. problem. You, you have problem. a big problem. Yeah. But I, mean, I like what you're mm -hmm. saying because when you're looking at the Ministry of Finance, uh, I mean, it's one of the core ministries, exactly. and if that ministry is intact, mm. um, then clearly things are going to go well. But I want us to dig deeper mm. uh, into this 25%. Uh, the strength of the tool is in performing a root cause analysis. Mm. So what were the main root causes of weaknesses within the system, mm. uh, according to your... The, yeah, the, the, the dominant root causes that kept recurring uh, where there were areas of, uh, uh, of weaknesses uh, or underperformance was governance and oversight. Mm. Uh, which means, and uh, which when we, we also compare with the reports that we normally issue uh, on, 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 on the entities, uh, was actually coming out very clearly as indeed that this is a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing being is you have the system in place. You have been given uh, direct directives on how to uh, implement the system. Mm -hmm. But you need somebody to take charge to ensure that at the entity level, governance is taking place, mm -hmm. that um, oversight is taking place, that there's a feedback process within the entity mm -hmm. uh, that takes place. And uh, this is what kept coming out, that mm -hmm. we need to strengthen governance and oversight at the entity level. But AG, when we're looking at something like governance and oversight within the public financial management space, within the public sector, mm -hmm. a sector which is highly regulated by laws and regulations, mm -hmm. usually the issue of governance and oversight is goes hand in glove with the laws that are in place. Mm -hmm. Are we saying the laws are not good enough or are we saying the laws are there but they're being flouted? Mm -hmm. uh, the laws are there. As, as I said earlier, our PFM system is anchored from the Constitution mm -hmm. to the Public Finance Management Act, very robust, and with regulations. We have regulations on public finance management, very clear regulations. Mm -hmm. The laws are there. Mm -hmm. uh, following the law or implementing the law or ensuring it's working on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. has been the issue yes. because the laws are there. We cannot change the law uh because it is strong the law as it is is strong enough mm -hmm. but we must require of those who are in charge to ensure that they follow the law mm -hmm. throughout very interesting Auditor General. i really look forward to reading the full piece whereby we can see those areas of um, weakness that are being picked up mm -hmm. but um fantastic let's go to a um, issue that i know is very dear to you Auditor general the issue of sdgs mm -hmm. Is the system ready mm. to assist government to achieve? I mean, I'm talking about this. We're coming from 2015, the MDGs. Mm. Um, the governments of the world didn't do a great, great, great job in meeting those. That's not to say they didn't do much. They did a lot, but they didn't quite get where we wanted them to get. 2030, SDGs, mm. the PFM. Mm. What are you seeing, Auditor General Gatungu? Um, one thing that um, is important is for countries mm -hmm. uh, and for that matter for supreme audit institutions to unpack the SDGs as part of service delivery, uh -huh. which must be aligned or anchored with the national development plans. Because if you look, for example, at SDGs relating to health, uh, SDGs relating to food security, mm -hmm. Uh, SDGs relating to housing. I mean, the whole, uh, the whole of the SDGs speak to what the people in this world need done mm -hmm. for them. Mm -hmm. We need good health, especially mm -hmm. now with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to make sure that the health systems are working. And every government that is providing services uh, to the people 
must pay attention to those very issues. Of course, it depends on how developed or how developing uh, the level of development uh, of each of each each country. Mm -hmm. And service delivery, uh, PFM uh, system, uh, is is the key vehicle mm -hmm. for service delivery in any country. Absolutely. Because you need funding. Uh, not just funding, you need to manage the processes mm -hmm. if you are, for example, doing procurement for medical equipment or mm -hmm. medical commodities. That is part of PFM. Mm -hmm. uh, the people who manage the human resource, uh, how they are trained and how they handle uh, and how they go through the processes, that is part of PFM. Wow. So you need a robust PFM system to ensure first that you respond to the basic needs of the people, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the national development plan, and the SDGs, and wow. they are all in in my interpretation and how we 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 unpack them in Kenya or mm -hmm. in Sai Kenya, they are all aligned. Wow. One wow. speaks to the other. Mm. So the the tool has helped us uh, through the assessment, carrying out the assessment with the tool, to actually see how well uh, have we aligned. Kenya has domesticated uh, quite a number of SDGs, SDGs. and there are some that have been prioritized. Mm -hmm. Uh, and they are also uh, in the prioritized uh, national development uh, agenda uh, currently. And by assessing them concurrently, mm -hmm. the national development agenda, the SDGs, mm -hmm. uh, and of course some of key issues that are uh, also addressed in Agenda 2063, we are able to ask ourselves, uh, are we on course? Mm -hmm. Are we on course with regard to health, whether under SDG, whether under national development plan? But when now you unpack it deeper or you mm -hmm. do root cause analysis yes. and you look at the actual targets on the SDG and compare with the targets under the National Development Plan and see there's alignment, then you're able to adequately answer that question that indeed we are on course or there is a gap here. Are we on course, AG? Is Kenya on course, AG? Kenya, I just want to hear that. Kenya is on course to right. a very large extent. Right. Yes. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, AG, uh, for that one. Um, look... You, you have been ambassador uh, of the PFM too. Uh, I've, 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 I've witnessed you speaking at various forums, whether it's, 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 in, it's in Portugal, whether it's yeah, in New York, wherever it is where, where, where you speak about the public financial reporting too. Mm -hmm. And um, also your appointment now is um, the vice chair of AfroSci E, uh, the, the regional block itself. So tell me, what is your key message to your fellow auditor generals who are either using this tool or are planning on using this tool or don't even want to use this tool? <laughs> What's your message? Uh, I, I think, uh, Ed, my message would have to start from the roles and responsibilities of Supreme, uh, Supreme Audit Institutions mm -hmm. and the recognition that Supreme Audit Institutions are the authorities with regard to advising governments uh, on public finance management and on service delivery through the work that we do. And when you have a tool like this, it is very important to make use of it because it enriches the kind of advice you give to governments through the recommendations mm -hmm, we issue mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, in the audit reports. And we cannot shy away from that. The voice of the auditors uh, general or the supreme audit institutions uh, must be at the forefront. Uh, with regard to monitoring uh, the, the service delivery and with regard to achievement of national development goals and the SDGs. And this, this, uh, this tool, mm -hmm. uh, because I have used it and I've seen the results that uh, it, it can give us, mm -hmm. uh, ensures or enables the voice of the Auditor General to be heard. Wow. Auditor General Gatungu. Thank you so much. That was a very well articulated parting shot. And um, to those who are listening out there, the true lovers of the PFM, the true lovers of public service delivery, I hope you got that strong and passionate nugget of wisdom from the Auditor General of Kenya. One person, one Auditor General who has been able to perform an audit using the public financial reporting framework and was here today just to let us know how it works. Auditor General,
thank you so much for the time that you took to come here and be with us on the PFM on the Couch series. And um, it is one series on the general which is not very comfortable because we do ask some tough questions that the whole world out there wants to hear. And for that, we always want to leave you with something to remember us by. And that is the PFM on the Couch cushion. Somewhere when you're at home and you're remembering all the tough things you've had to go through, don't forget us. And thank you so much. Thank you very much, Edmond. Uh, thank you for having me. It's been my pleasure. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for staying with us for the last half an hour or so. For more information on the recently published PFMRF audit report by the Sai of Kenya, please click the link below and uh, do not shy away from uh, using this technology and find out the efficiency and effectiveness of the PFM systems in Kenya. Of course, as always, your views and opinions on how we can improve this series is valuable. A big thank you to the scene and the crew behind who have helped us today, showing that um, this series is not a one-man job, but is a job of many. All of you who are using the PFM tool, all of you who are advocating it wherever you are, I salute you. Now, for those who continue to send your views on how well we are using this show and working on this show, I advise you to continue giving us feedback and continue visiting our website to give us some of your latest yearnings as far as emerging topics in PFM are concerned. And as for me, my name is Edmund Shoko. Thank you. This is the PFM on the Couch at Alpha Psi E.